Well, children, I know that you've all heard of St. Thomas the Apostle and how he has always been called for now centuries. He's always been called Doubting Thomas because if you remember how the story went, Thomas wasn't there when Jesus appeared after the resurrection. All the other apostles were there and they saw our Lord. He had truly risen from the dead after he was, after he was crucified, just like that. And then they, they buried him and he rose from the dead. He appeared to the apostles and, and Thomas wasn't there. So when the other apostles all ran to, to tell Thomas about this, he said, I won't believe. Not until I see his wounds and I, and I place my finger inside of his, his wound, then I'll believe. Well, our Lord appeared to him and allowed him to stick his hand into his wounds. And as the gospel just told us, uh, that was just sung, it says that St. Thomas fell down and he cried out with the greatest belief, my Lord and my God. Just like we do when the priest holds up the sacred host at the consecration. We believe that that, that is our Lord and we say my Lord and my God. But I, th I think as I was getting ready for this sermon today, St. Thomas should also get another name, Thomas the Courageous. He was a very brave apostle. Remember how when our Lord wanted to go into Judea to raise Lazarus, his friend, from the dead, all the other apostles tried to stop Jesus from going. They told him, it's too dangerous. There are too many enemies there, and they, they want to kill you. And St. Thomas says, because our Lord says, no, we're going anyway. St. Thomas looks at the other apostles dead in the eye, and he says to them, let's go with him so that we can all die with him. See how brave he was? He loved our Lord so much, he never wanted to leave his side, even if it meant dying along with him. No fear of death would separate him from our Lord. It's true though, later on in the Passion, St. Thomas did run away, but then he did come back as well. He returned and he served our Lord. And after Pentecost, St. Thomas went to many countries bravely preaching the faith. He went to India in particular. One of our teachers can tell you a lot about India and rabid dogs and everything else like that. She can tell you anything. And, but a miracle happened. There was a large tree there. It had been washed up from the sea to the land. And it was so big that all the men who tried to, to pick up this tree, you see the king wanted that tree so that he could build his palace with it. So all these men were trying, many hundreds of men perhaps, and none of them could even budge it. So then they got the elephants out. You know, when farmers do hard work, they get the donkeys out to, to pull things along. But back then, they had elephants to do the heavy lifting. Well, not even the elephants could lift it. So St. Thomas, he was very bold and very brave. He, he trusted in our Lord an awful lot. He said to the king, I'll move that tree on one condition, that you'll give it to me so that I can build a church with it. So the king said, okay. He didn't think St. Thomas could do it alone. So St. Thomas took his, his belt, it's what we call a cincture, it's the, a cord that you wear just to, like you would a, a belt. He took it off, he tied it around the tree, and he made the sign of the cross over it. And then all alone, he moved this gigantic tree. And then when he, after he built the church, there was a cross in it, of course, and he wrote the words there. It was a prophecy. He said, because remember, this church was next to the sea, but the, the water was kind of far away. He said, when the water reaches this cross, priests and men, holy men from Europe will come to teach you the same faith that I had begun. 
And years later, when the, the water actually reached the cross, that was the exact same time that St. Francis Xavier landed in India and began preaching. Well, then danger came. St. Thomas, though, remained courageous. He knew he'd have to suffer because he kept talking about Jesus. There were some priests who worshiped idols and they didn't like what St. Thomas was doing. So they turned the king against him. So one day as they were kind of like Ju Judas in a way. Judas knew every place that our Lord would go to pray. Well, these certain men knew the exact times and places that St. Thomas would go to pray. So they sent out the enemies to wait for him. As he knelt down to pray, they stabbed him with a lance. And then when he fell to the ground, they beat him and kicked him until he died. You see what a courageous man he is? Courage, children, courage. That's what's needed your whole life long. We all of us sometimes fall, just like St. Thomas. Remember, he doubted our Lord. And then he ran away from our Lord when the, our Lord needed him most. But he never gave up. He always came back. There's a famous line from a movie. I don't know that I'd recommend watching it, but it's a famous line. It's not about how many times you get hit. It's about how many times you get hit and keep getting back up. That's a lesson for the spiritual life. We all of us have our temptations that we, we sometimes give into and our bad days and everything, but that's when we need to dig down deep and ask the Holy Ghost for the courage or fortitude to just get back up and to keep going in the service of our Lord. So remember today, children, Thomas the Courageous, and try to keep that in mind. And all day today, in all of your temptations or when your teacher tells you to do work, be courageous. We know you don't want to do your schoolwork. We know you don't want to do what the teachers tell you, but it takes courage and strength to obey them and to do those things that we do not like to do. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.